Now, speaking of the devastating cultural destruction of our children, it is amazing during this most prized time of the year. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's Pride Month, LGBTQ plus minus divided by sign, ampersand, pound sign, hashtag emoji. It's that time of the year. It's magic. Well, I think most Americans are beginning to see that there has been a rather striking move from what we do in our own bedrooms is none of your business. Leave us alone. alone to I'm going to put on a strap on and I'm going to mimic masturbation in front of your children. I think most Americans can see that. The argument for leave us alone, privacy, consent, that argument radically changes when the idea is performative sexual antics in front of children so as to induct them into the idea that all forms of sex are morally equivalent and that if you do not believe this, you are a bigot. It, it, it's a striking shock, uh, really. That is a, that is a rather shocking move that we have seen from the radical left in terms of the LGBTQ divided by sign community. Uh, that, that is, a, that is a, an unsustainable argument and it's going to have massive backlash attached. And every video that comes out of major American celebrities doing this or every pride parade that features men in assless chaps jiggling their, their nether regions before small children is going to create a backlash that I think people are not going to like very much. So for example, Christina Aguilera, who is looking rough these days, Christina Aguilera, she was at the LA pride parade where she donned a, a bejeweled strap on, which is always just a delightful thing, and uh, mimics masturbation. This was an event open to all ages, so presumably there are minors in the crowd. Here we go. She's been blurred out. She's wearing a strap on, and then she's mimicking masturbation. Oh my God, so she's got another woman who is essentially on her knees before her. And then she is going to, uh, she's going to mimic masturbating right now with her tongue out in front of a woman on her knees in front of her. This is, this is exactly the kind of stuff that, that I think that America's children should be exposed to because if they are exposed to this sort of stuff, then presumably it will broaden their minds to the point where all their brains fall out. Also, you'll have increasing rates of suicidal ideation among children if they are exposed to a ruleless and roleless society, which is precisely what you're seeing. And it's being promoted by every cultural institution in America. Pride parades are no longer the preserve of adults who are engaged in antics better relegated to the recesses of their boudoirs. Instead, you have men with fake breasts attached to them twerking in front of children. This is a thing that happened at, I believe, again, the LA Pride Parade. I believe this one is. Um, here is, uh, in front of a cop, by the way. In all likelihood, this would have been arrestable for indecent exposure in any prior time. Um, but um, here we go. And here is a man wearing devil horns, strutting over with fake breasts, and, uh, and trying to twerk on a police officer who's attempting to get away. There are children who are right there in the crowd. Isn't that, isn't that delightful? This is, it's the best that America has to offer. I mean, this is what Nancy Pelosi says. And, and all of this is attached to a basic agenda, which is to, it is to go after kids, not for sexual pleasure, but to go after kids and to mold their minds in such a way that you have raised the next generation to believe all of the radical things that make you feel good about yourself, which is why it is rather important. You have to see this as part of a broader left-wing movement to take your ability to raise your child away from you and through the mechanisms of social media and through the mechanisms of entertainment and through the mechanisms of, the, of, of corporate, corporate America and, and schooling to essentially indoctrinate your kids in an alternative system of values that opposes everything that you wish to teach them. That is the goal here. And it, this is its most extreme form. The less extreme form is, of course, Disney is releasing its new movie, Lightyear, this year. It's coming out this week. And they've decided to go on full-on LGBT propaganda in the film. So they actually have a lesbian kiss in the film between one of the kids. This is an animated film made for small children. And they're now adding in LGBT orientation lessons for small kids. This is not a shock. I mean, Disney has said they have a not-so-secret gay agenda. That's according to producer Latoya Ravino, who says that they are seeking to add queerness to children's programming. The reason that you're doing this is not because you're seeking to protect the kids, but because you are seeking to indoctrinate the kids in a belief system that makes you feel better about yourself. That is the goal here. And this isn't just true on issues of LGBT. This is also true on issues of race. 
which is why you have people like Ibram X. Kendi, who is a grifter extraordinaire. I mean, this moral idiot is now writing books for small children, the goal of which is to indoctrinate them in the idea that America is systemically racist and that racism is in the air all around you and that children have to be thinking about race all the time, that somehow this is better for them. So here is Imram X. Kendi. I believe he's on Good Morning America, correct? This is in CBS Mornings, who is talking about how his books teach children to see racism. So normally what you want to teach kids is to treat everybody really well. Like my kids do not even understand racism because the idea that people should be treated differently based on their skin color is idiotic to them. And by the way, I believe this has been the pattern in the United States for at least two generations at this point. I mean, I was raised this way. The idea was that there are kids in your class who look different than you, and so what? Like, treat everybody as an individual, which is the essence of decency. Edward Max Kennedy teaches precisely the reverse. You're supposed to treat people as part of an essentialized race that has a status in American society, and thus we have to have different standards for everyone based on their immutable characteristics. Here's Ibram X. Kendi promoting this garbage to children. Now look at you and say, you're the racist, actually, Ibram Kendi. I, I was watching someone on TV. You're the one that's a racist who's, who's promoting these ideas. He's teaching everyone to see race as yes, opposed to the opposite. Exactly. Well, I'm actually teaching people to see racism. Uh-huh. There's, there's a difference. difference. Mm-hmm. Like the, race is a mirage, but racism is real. And it's, you know who's the most likely to be harmed by racism? Our children. And you know who we're the least likely to engage about it? <laughs> Our, our children. Our children. Yeah. You know, yes. that's what's really so compelling true. me to do this work. What in the world does that mean? Seriously, I, I, want, I want him to like explicate that. Racism is, is most likely to affect our kids. So what, they're supposed to become the chief activists? They're children. The goal is to protect children, but no. For the left, it's not. It's to make them tiny activists. The idea is that children are supposed to be tiny activists for their particular point of view. Now, the argument that the left makes is, well, you know, you on the right, you also want to indoctrinate your children in your values. That's right. They're my kids. They're not your kids. They're my kids. And not just that, the values that I'm seeking to teach my kids have been time tested over the course of several thousand years. The values you're seeking your kids came directly out of your colon five seconds ago. And now you're wishing to indoctrinate kids into an entire system of belief that is perverse and confusing to children. And then we are wondering why exactly we have a massive increase in the the amount of suicidal ideation and mental illness among kids. Eric Kaufman has a pretty brave piece today over at Quillette talking about this. And he makes a point that I've been making for months on this program, which is that when you look at the skyrocketing rates of mental illness and suicidal ideation among teenagers, that is not disconnected from the sexual anarchy that we have been promoting to small kids. And when you remove all roles, all of the duties, all of the responsibilities, all of the rules surrounding children, what you end up with is kids who are confused, kids who don't know what to do with themselves, kids who are facing the prospect of their own changing biology with with Nothing with no tools to handle any of that. And then you wonder why people are are losing their minds, why kids are more suicide. You wonder why all this is happening because you created it and you can see it in the stats. We're all supposed to pretend that it was COVID. It wasn't COVID. It predates COVID. We're all supposed to pretend that it has something to do with the animistic, A-N-O, animistic, atomistic society that we've created. But we're not supposed to actually explain how we got to this atomistic society. We're supposed to pretend that individualized sexual and sexual orientation and gender identity standards are not atomistic in any way. That's a communal thing. That, no, it's not. So, writes Eric Kaufman today in a very important piece over at Quillette. Will America be entirely gay in a few generations? Will everyone be mentally ill? It would appear so from a straight line extrapolation of the stunning rise in both LGBT identification and mental illness among young Americans. Let's begin with trends in sexual orientation among young people. A recent Gallup survey found that roughly 20% of Generation Z Americans who have reached adulthood, those born between 97 and 2003, identify as LGBT. That is nearly double the proportion of millennials who do so, while the gap widens even further when compared with older generations. Abigail Schreier reports a 1,000-fold increase in trans identification. Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene thinks this indicates there will be no straight people in a few generations. Bill Maher lampoons the increase as a rebellious fad. Progressives celebrate the rise as an electoral boon for the Democrats. Other liberals view the, view the rise as a product of increasing toleration, like left-handedness, right? This is the chart that they'll send you when you mention the increasing rise in ID. They'll say, well, you know, it used to be that society suppressed left-handedness. Then it got rid of the suppressions and a lot of people identified as left-handed. Yeah, the difference is that flattened out at like 7% of the population. It didn't continue to rise generation on generation over time. Says Eric Kaufman, of these responses, Mars is closest to the target. A granular look at survey data on same-sex behavior and LGBT identity shows identification is increasingly diverging from behavior. More importantly, those who adopt an LGBT identity but display conventionally heterosexual behavior are a growing and distinct group. 
who lean strongly to the left politically and experience considerably greater mental health problems than the rest of the population. In other words, you have a bunch of people who are self-identifying as queer, who are actually just heterosexual, quote unquote, cisgender people, people who identify with the sex they were born into and only have sex with people of the opposite sex, which used to be the statistical norm. And those people are identifying as queer. By contrast, and this is really an interesting contrast Derek Kaufman is drawing, those who engage in same-sex behavior are more politically moderate and psychologically stable than left-wingers who are associate, who are, who are now calling themselves LGBTQ, but engaging in heterosexual behavior. These facts sit awkwardly with the progressive view that the rise in LGBT identity, like left-handedness, is explained by people increasingly feeling they can come out of the closet because society is more liberal. My analysis of these data raise another interesting question. Has some of the increase in anxiety and depression among young people, like the LGBT identity surge, arisen from a culture that values divergence and boundary transgression over conformity to traditional norms and rules? And then he goes through the data, and the data is really, really compelling. And he says, there's a serious issue thrown up by these trends, rising levels of anxiety and depression, especially among LGBT female and liberal young people. Derek Thompson's Atlantic article shows that over three in four LGBT identifying teens in 2021 said they felt persistently sad or hopeless, as did 57% of female teens. The 2021 GSS and 2020 Qualtrics survey I conducted show that very liberal young people are twice as likely as slight liberals, moderates, and conservatives to say they have experienced depression and anxiety. LGBT young people are 2.5 times more likely to report these symptoms. This means there is a strong correlation between people between people's responses to three questions, sexual orientation, mental health, political beliefs. In fact, a common factor accounts for almost half of the variation in the answers across all three questions, suggesting they heavily overlap. While it can be difficult to pick causation and correlation apart, there is one figure that is interesting. The figure compares two separate groups, young women who report having slept with a woman over the past year and young women who did not sleep with a woman but identify as LGBT. The data shows that the share of women who have had a same-sex partner does not differ a great deal in their ideology. Around 3% of both liberal and conservative women reported a same-sex experience between 2008 and 2021. There is a huge ideological difference, however, among women who have not had a same-sex partner but still identify as LGBT, which means to say political identity, an identity that is directly aimed at Judeo-Christian value systems. Turning to mental health, he says, I find the same pattern. Women exhibiting same-sex behavior are far less different from the average than women who have conventional sexual behavior but identify as LGBT. So bottom line is this. The progressive account that LGBT identification is like left-handedness, that persecution explains mental illness, that rising toleration leads to more people coming out cannot account for the patterns in my data. A more parsimonious explanation is that left liberal culture, especially among young people, inclines people to identify as both LGBT and as having a mental health problem. It may be the modern culture is, as Boston University's Leah Greenfield suggests, anomic. That is, by breaking down established identity roles, narratives, and boundaries, it introduces dissonance, indeterminacy, and choice, increasing rates of identity crisis, and by extension, psychological distress. The rise in mental health problems is worse in the West than elsewhere in the world, reflecting the cultural specificity of mental illness. In a recent article for the Wall Street Journal, Greenfield says, the more a society is dedicated to the value of equality, the more choices it offers for individual self-determination, the higher its rates of functional mental illness. Equality inevitably makes self-definition a matter of one's own choice. The formation of personal identity becomes a personal responsibility, a burden some people can't shoulder. You know who can't shoulder that burden? Any of them? Children. You know who the left seeks to make those decisions? Children. That is why they are targeting children. And anybody, by the way, who, who tries to cram this down on children is committing a sin. You know, the, the, one of the pieces of data that the left likes to cite all the time with regards to this sort of stuff is the idea, and it's not data, that if you give puberty blockers to children, that this somehow is going to make their lives better. Cross-sex hormones, puberty blockers, is it going to make everything better? Well, as it turns out, there's a brand new study from Heritage Foundation, Professor Jay Green, who's a senior research fellow at the Center for Education Fo Policy, and he finds that actually lowering the legal barriers to make it easier for minors to undergo cross-sex medical interventions without parental consent does not reduce suicide rates. It leads to higher rates of suicide among young people in states that adopt these changes. Again, not a shock. Confuse kids and then give them the means to screw themselves up and they will take it. None of this is surprising. I know what you're thinking. It's time to binge some more Ben Shapiro videos. Well, you are right. You should. But first, like and subscribe. Perfect. I'll see you in the next video.